I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe the Zoom, is it okay if I turn off my camera? Um, that might be the problem because I remember when I was teaching, I would always turn off the camera because the computer would overheat. You can do whatever, you, whatever you're. Okay, so I will turn off the camera, hoping that that problem doesn't happen again. All right, okay. Okay, so, um, so yes, so we were talking about um, parallel transport, right? Okay, so we have, um, so we take, remember, and now our, our, we have a Riemannian manifold, right? Which means a manifold with a metric, right? Which is a positive definite quadratic form on every tangent space of M and it varies in a infinity way with the point of F, M, right? Okay, so on our Riemannian manifold, then we give ourselves a C infinity vector bundle and a connection on it. And then how do we do parallel transport? We also need a curve. So we, we give ourselves a smooth curve. Okay, now the, the Apple pencil isn't working. I need to reconnect to the iPad. Okay, so and the smooth curve uh, gamma, which goes from the interval zero one into our manifold, our infinity manifold M. Right. Okay. So how do we do trans parallel transport? We can pull back. So the pullback. gamma upper star of E is a C infinity vector bundle on zero one with fiber E sub gamma of T at any T belonging to zero one, okay? And the connection nabla defines a connection on this pullback vector bundle. Which I will denote by gamma upper star of nabla. This is a slight abuse of notation. So where, what am I doing? I, I want to go from gamma upper star of E to gamma upper star of E tensored with the tangent bundle of the interval zero one, that's a cotangent bundle of the interval zero one, that's by definition a connection on gamma upper star of E, but that's not what I'm gonna get, right? So normally when I just pull back nabla, I'm not going to go to the tangent bundle of zero one, I'm going to go to the pullback of the cotangent bundle of M, right? But then this guy has got a projection onto the tangent, the cotangent bundle of zero one, okay? And this, this composition here is gamma upper star of nabla. All right. Um, okay, and in, in local coordinates, uh, you can write down what it is. So, Uh, you, you can write gamma of T as X1 of T, Xn of T. And then you have the velocity vector gamma dot of T, which is uh, the derivatives X1 dot of T up to Xn dot of T, right? And then for all, for all sections E of E, Actually, you just need to do local sections again. You can define the value. So nabla gamma dot T of E. Well, what is this going to be? This is going to be nabla, the sum of X dot I 
of t d d x i sum over i applied to the vector e, which is also the sum for i going from one to n of uh, x dot i of t nabla sub d d x i of e. Okay, so you can differentiate. So what are we doing here? We're differentiating this section little e of big E in the direction of the curve. So uh, you know, in the direction of the velocity vector of the tangent uh, vector of the curve, right? Okay, so now we have uh, this is this is this is now par parallel transport, right? What do we mean by parallel transport? This is a definition and proposition. Um, if little x is gamma of zero, so that's the starting point of our of our path gamma, little y is gamma of one, right? Then for all uh, sections E, uh, not sections, sorry, just elements of the fiber. So little e is not just in the fiber of, of E at the point X. This is also, remember, this is the pullback of E fiber at the point zero, right? There exists a smooth, Uh, sorry, a unique smooth section little s of gamma upper star of E such that s of zero is little e and if I look at the connection gamma upper star nabla of S, then that is actually zero. What does that mean? It means that when I take the derivative in the direction, in the tangent direction to my curve of my section little s, that is zero. So, so in some sense, so this is the best substitute for talking for, you know, for having a constant function, right? Here we don't, we don't have functions. Um, what we have are um, sections of a vector bundle, right? And uh, so we want to talk about what it means for a section of a vector bundle to be constant. And uh, now here we, we're only talking about being constant in a given direction. So this is, this is the direction of our curve. We have a path from one point of our manifold to another point of our manifold. That's the path gamma going from little x to little y, right? And we want to say what it means for a section of E to be constant on that path. And what it means is that this derivative, the connection applied to that section is zero, right? Okay. Um, so what this, what this is saying, this is the proposition part. The proposition part says that there exists a section which is actually constant, right? And it is unique. Uh, now the definition part, the parallel transport, of little e along gamma to little y is what we call p gamma of e, which is by definition, the value of our constant section s at one, which belongs to the fiber of our vector bundle at y, which is also equal to the fiber of gamma upper star of e at the point one, okay? And then the, and again, the proposition part the map, this map define this 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 operation defines a map, right? P sub gamma, which goes from the fiber of little e, big E at x to the fiber of E at y. And the claim is that this is a linear isomorphism. Okay, so this is a parallel transport. So this is this is very nice. If you have a connection, um, then you can uh, you can transport uh, one, one fiber of your vector bundle to another fiber of your vector bundle, okay? Now we use parallel transport to define holonomy, right? So what is holonomy? Again, this is another definition 
and proposition. If gamma is a loop, uh, which means of course that gamma of zero is equal to gamma of one, which is equal to little x equal, equal to little y, then, then this p gamma, right? Uh, well, we already know that this is, a, this is uh, in an element of GL of EX, right? Uh, the holonomy group Um, the holonomy is the image uh, sorry the holonomy H O whole X of Nabla at X is the image of P gamma well, of um, of p, really. So, so what 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 does that mean? It means that your holonomy, so whole. Let me write it down here. Whole x of nabla is, by definition, the set of p gammas such that gamma is a loop based at little x. Okay. All right, so the holonomy group has got the following properties, right? Number one, this is a Lie subgroup. Whole X of Nabla is a Lie subgroup of GL of EX. Okay, well, what, how do you do that? Well, uh, there are two parts to this. You have to show that it's a group and then you have to show that it has a manifold structure. Okay, so I'm not really gonna get into too much into the manifold structure, right? Uh, but I will, I will explain to you how it's a group. So if I, if I want to compose, right, composition, which is the usual thing. So you, if you have two paths, gamma and delta, right? You can define their composition in the following way. Uh, what's it going to be? You're going to take from zero to one half. You're going to take delta. And then from one half to one, you're going to take gamma. OK, so you concatenate. This is the concatenation. And what's the inverse? The inverse is just gamma of one minus t. You're just going in the opposite direction, right? And what, what do you have? You can prove easily that p gamma delta is equal to p gamma composed with p delta and the inverse, p gamma inverse is equal to p sub gamma inverse, okay? All right. And the second, uh, another nice property of, of this holonomy group is the following. If gamma is a path, now from, uh, from between possibly distinct points, right? The points don't necessarily have to be uh, the same. From X to Y, then uh, we can we can describe we can relate the holonomy at little x to the holonomy at little y, right? So what what you get is that the holonomy at little y is the conjugate of the holonomy at little x. So you just conjugate by p gamma. All right. So what do you get here? So you so you get that um, up to conjugation. Uh, you get that the, the, that the holonomy depends only on the connected component of, of M.
containing x. And here we're thinking of it as a subgroup of GLN, which is GL of EX, GL, let me say GLM, if EX is isomorphic to RM, okay? So if M is the dimension of the fiber of your vector bundle, then you can identify EX with RM and GL of EX with GL of RM. And, you know, then the holonomy group is well-defined up to conjugation, regardless of which point you choose in a, in a given connected component of M, right? So this is something that's actually associated to the manifold and the vector bundle with its connection. Uh, property three is that if M is simply connected, then um, the holonomy group is actually connected. Okay. And the way that works is that any, you know, just roughly speaking, what's the idea of that proof is that any loop can be shrunk to a point Right. So then if you take a homotopy from your loop to the constant loop, which is just a constant function mapping to a point, uh, then you get um, these homotopies uh, will give you a path in, in the holonomy group. So the, as I said, I don't want to get into the details of this. We get a path in whole X of NABLA from from one from one holonomy to another holonomy okay to another sorry from one parallel transport to another parallel transport yeah so so um, so first of all the holonomy group depends only on the con on the connected component and then if your manifold is simply connected your holonomy group is actually a connected least of group of glm glm right and then we have some uh, another very nice property of the holonomy. It, it puts a restriction, I mean, on the curvature. Okay, so how does that work? So that's property number four. It, this is the relation with the curvature. Curvature R of our connection NABLA, right? Um, so, okay, so what did we have? We have that the, you have the holonomy group, right? Whole X of NABLA, which is contained in uh, GL of EX. You can look at the Lie algebra. This is a Lie subgroup, right? You can look at its Lie algebra. It's Lie algebra, I'm going to denote it by little hole of X of NABLA. This is contained in the Lie algebra of GL, which is just the endomorphism ring of EX, right? Endomorphism ring of EX. And remember that, so we had the curvature R of NABLA, right? Where, where was this? This belongs to, one way of looking at it was C infinity of the endomorphisms of E tensored with wedge two, TM dual, right? So then at the point at, at the point of M, the point little x of M, you can look at the fiber of the curvature, R of nabla sub x, when this belongs to C infinity of and EX tensored with wedge two of TXM dual, right? So that's the fiber of the curvature. Then what's the claim? And this is the relation between the holonomy and the curvature. This R of NABLA at X, a priori, it belongs to C infinity of the endomorphism ring. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. There's no C infinity anymore. Okay. Because I'm at a point, right? I'm just, I'm just evaluating things at the point. So this is just... Um, This is just end 
EX tensored with wedge to TX dual of M, right? So that's all I've got. So then, you know, if you look at the holonomy, it's a least subalgebra of N EX. So what happens is in fact that this curvature belongs to the holonomy. So this tells you, this is good news because this tells you that looking at the holonomy is a natural thing, right? So we define this holonomy as, you know, these, um, these, uh, these linear operators that, that take a vector to its parallel transports along different loops, right? You take a vector to its parallel transports along different, group, uh, different loops, and that defines a, a, you know, an operation on the fiber of the, your vector bundle at a point, at a given point, right? And what's nice is that the, the, the Lie algebra of this Lie subgroup, the holonomy group, contains the, the, the curvature operator, right? So the value of the curvature, okay. Um, okay. So now we, we're gonna look at, look a little bit more at, um, at this holonomy and curvature. So um, it's useful to, uh, to talk about connections on tensor powers, okay? So the connection, NABLA, induces connections on all tensor powers, um, E, you know, tensor to the K, tensor with E dual tensor L, right? And all exterior and symmetric powers as well. Okay, when we will denote all of these again by the letter lab NAPA. So it's an abuse of notation, but you know, it would, the notation will, be, will become very heavy if we started to use indices for these things. So we will denote these also by NABLA. All right. And so again, to, as I said, to further you know, relate the curvature and the holonomy, we're going to make a definition a tensor S by a tensor now, what I mean is just some section of some tensor powers of power, you know, of E and E dual or, or symmetric powers or exterior powers. So some section of one of these bundles, right? Um, is called constant or sometimes people say covariantly constant. if nabla of S is zero, right? So I have a tensor, I can apply the, the connection to it. And I'm gonna say that it's constant when, when, you know, if I apply the connection to it, I just get zero. Okay, so um, now we have a nice theorem for a tensor S. Nabla of S is zero if and only if S is fixed by the holonomy group. Okay, so the holonomy group, remember, a priori it acts on the fiber of E. But you know, if you have a linear action on a fiber of E, you can also define a linear action on the fiber of E, e dual, on the power of power, on, on all the tensor powers of E, all the tensor powers of E dual, et cetera, right? So you have an action of the holonomy group also on all of these tensor powers. And so now you're saying that being constant is the same as being fixed by the action of the holonomy, right? And that is also what, the same as saying that uh, P gamma of S of X is equal to S of Y for all X and Y in M, okay? So what you're saying then is that your, your tensor is constant if and only if you can, you know, 
uh, it's parallel transport, it's, it is itself, which makes sense, right? We were talking about the parallel transport as being, you know, some kind of a constant transport. So um, to say that, uh, to say that the holonomy being fixed by the holonomy group is the same as being constant, I mean, that makes sense, right? And of course, you know, technically speaking, you would have to write it down and verify that it does, this all works, you know, prove this theorem rigorously, but intuitively it kind of makes sense. That's how we define things, right? Okay. All right, so we're done with our basic definitions. Um, now let's get closer to our classification. So what we want to do here, we want to do some kind of classification of the Riemannian manifolds, and then our hyperkähler manifolds will naturally drop out as one of the big classes of manifolds in that classification. All right. Okay. So, and, and we do the classification by using the holonomy. All right. Uh, so now the holonomy that we're going to use is the holonomy that's intrinsically related to our Riemannian manifold. Okay. So a Riemannian manifold has got a canonical connection on its tangent bundle, which is called the levi civita connection. And that's the connection that we're going to use. And, and you know, we're going to do its holonomy. And then we're going to classify the holonomy groups of these levi civita connections. And then say that this, these hyperkähler manifolds you know, form a big class of manifolds with a given holonomy group, OK? All right, so let me now talk about what the levi civita connection is. Right? So suppose then M is a Riemannian manifold. And I will usually denote it by a pair. So M is the C infinity manifold, and then little g is our, uh, is our tensor, which is the Riemannian metric. Okay? So is the Riemannian. So G is the metric, right? Is a Riemannian manifold. Uh, so we have the fundamental theorem of Riemannian geometry. And what is that theorem? It says that there exists a unique torsion free connection Nabla on the tangent bundle TM such that nabla g is zero so g itself is a zero two tensor right and we remember we can apply the connection to any tensor and uh, we want this nabla g to be zero this unique connection is called the Levi Civita or Riemannian connection. Of M. M together with G, right? So the metric is very important here. The metric defines the Levi Civita connection. Okay, um, and it's not it's not too difficult to show you know the existence the, exi the existence and uniqueness of the Levi Civita connection. You will find it in a standard uh, uh, book on Riemannian geometry, and I'm happy also to provide references if you wish. Um, so now let's look at the uh, so now this uh, the fact that this is a very special connection means a little bit more about the curvature, right? So the curvature. So now we have uh, we have this connection Nabla, which is the Levi Civita. So Nabla goes from TM into TM tensor TM dual, right? That's um, be the 
Devi Chivita connection. All right. And um, then you have the curvature, R of Nabla. What does that do? It goes from Tm to Tm tensor wedge two of Tn dual, right? And we can also use, because we have the metric, right? You have G, the metric. We can think of the metric as an isomorphism between Tm and Tm dual, right? And we can combine we can combine the curvature with the metric to contain to con, to to define a different a new tensor so define the zero four tensor so the curvature tensor this is a, it is a zero three tensor right oh sorry a one three a one three tensor the metric is a zero two tensor. Right, and the, the, so we're going to define a zero four tensor R tilde as the composition so how does that go you go Tm goes to Tm tensored with wedge two of Tm dual here I'm going to put R and then here I'm going to put G tensored with the identity, and I'm going to go to TM dual tensored with wedge two of TM dual. So this composition here, this is my R tilde, okay? Um, so why do we do this? Um, we do this because we can actually exhibit some symmetry properties of, of our um, Levi-Civita connection, okay? So what are the symmetry properties? Uh, you can show, for instance, uh, something nice you can show that R tilde. So a priori, let's look at R tilde again, right? So a priori R tilde goes from TM to TM dual tensored with wedge two of TM dual. Or you can think of it as a, an element of TM dual tensored twice tensored with wedge two, right? But what happens is that it actually belongs to sim two of wedge two of TM dual, if you think of this inside wedge two of TM dual tensored with itself, which is also inside TM dual, TM dual and then wedge two. So this, the, the bottom guy is what I had a priori, right? A priori, I just know that R tilde uh, belongs to this, to this bottom guy, right? But inside the bottom guy, I have wedge two of TM dual tensor with itself. And then inside that I have sim two. And it, what happens is that you can actually show that R tilde belongs to this subspace, all right? Um, and in fact, you know, there are also some identities that, uh, people call Bianchi identities. Maybe I won't really go into those. Uh, again, you know, you can, you can find them in, in references or in the notes that will be published soon. Um, uh, so again, these are, these are again more symmetry properties, right? Of this. R tilde, so it's much easier to see the symmetries, you know, when you use R tilde, when you use the G, the metric G to define something uh, from the curvature, right? Uh, and uh, another thing that you also see is that, uh, you know, so we remember the holonomy group again, right? Uh, where was the holonomy, right? The holonomy, the holonomy group is a subgroup of GL of, GL of, TM, TXM right now, right? Because our vector bundle is now the tangent bundle. So this is GL of the tangent space of M at X. And then you have the holonomy, the Lie algebra of the holonomy, which is in the endomorphism ring, right? And we had that for an arbitrary vector bundle, right? We had this thing right here, which is that the curvature belongs to the Lie algebra of the holonomy tensor with wedge two of TM, 
dual, right? But um, what we have in fact for when, when our vector bundle is the tangent bundle, we have something even better. We have that R2, this R tilde is actually, if I look at it at a point little x, right? It's actually belongs to sim two of the holonomy group at x, which is contained in sim two of wedge two of the tangent bundle. And it's also contained in whole x tensored with wedge two of the tangent bundle. Okay, so so this this um, so you can show that this new curvature that we just defined by just putting g into the equation of the curvature it is actually belong it, you know it, it's it's much more restricted. So again, these are symmetry properties of the curvature. All right, but I'm not going to get too much into that. Um, these these are the things that people use. You know, when they as I said, what we wanted, what we're going what what people wanted to do was classify all holon holonomy groups. So you have this. Uh, you know, you have your levi civita connection, right? The levi civita connection is going to have a holonomy group. And then people classified all of these holonomy groups using the, all of these properties of the levi civita connection and then the curvature tensor of the levi civita connection, which are these symmetry properties and all that. Um, so, uh, so then they can, uh, as I said, then they can they can classify these these holonomy groups, and then that allows them to classify the Riemannian manifolds themselves. Um, so uh, I don't know. Should I uh, should I stop now? Am I out of time, or can I? Uh, is this the end of my time, or do I have another five minutes? Or you 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 have ten minutes. Uh, oh. But there is you, a good oh, question. You also have a question in the chat, yes. Yes. Yeah, I just I just saw that. Right, right. Um, in the last expression, you have the holonomy of the metric. Oh, yes, yes, that's right. Um, well, I should really okay, I'm going to change that. Uh, it, it is the holonomy of the of the connection, of course. But because you see, because the connection is yeah, it's the holonomy of the connection. Because the connection is determined by the metric, people actually write the, the holonomy of the metric, you see? So, uh, so if you look at the theorem, it says that if you have a Riemannian manifold, right? Uh, yeah, if you have a Riemannian manifold, it has a unique torsion-free connection such that the metric is constant with respect to that connection, right? So, uh, so then what you get is that uh, the holonomy group of this connection depends on the metric, right? Because the, the connection is determined by the metric. So then, um, yeah, so that's, um, that's what we get. So because, uh, so let me actually introduce that notation as well. So since NABLA is uniquely determined by, by the metric, We actually write um, whole x of g equals whole x of nabla, and the same for the Lie algebra. Okay, so this is notation. All right. Okay, so now before, before I can actually get to the classification of the holonomy groups, uh, I just need to talk about uh, symmetric spaces and then being uh, a product and stuff like that because we need to exclude those, okay? So we need to get, you know, to not have something that's symmetric and we need to have something that is not a product, okay? So I just need to briefly say something about what it means to be symmetric and what it means to a product so that then I can get rid of them, all right? Okay, so let me start by, so first of all, um, I think uh, everyone uh, can can do a product, right? So um, you know, if you have a if you have two manifolds, two Riemannian manifolds, you can take the product of the two differentiable manifolds, and then you can put a product metric on that product, right? So that's a product. And uh, so now let me talk about symmetric and locally symmetric spaces. Uh, 
right? So what's our definition? A Riemannian manifold is called, um, actually, before I get to symmetric, I have to talk about reducibility, sorry. Okay, so Riemannian manifold is called locally or not locally reducible if every point has a neighborhood isometric to a product. Okay. It is called irreducible if it is not locally reducible. Okay. Now you have a proposition about the holonomy of a product. So suppose uh, a neighborhood of little x in M is isometric to the product um, some product M1 G1 let's say times M2 G2 then the holonomy of G1, G2 is equal to the holonomy of G1 times the holonomy of G2. So the holonomy group shows you the product structure, okay? Um, and then you have a nice theorem. If M is irreducible, at X, then um, our N, which is T X M is an irreducible representation of the holonomy group. Okay, so um, yeah, so, so, so it's, it's kind of nice, you know, if it's reducible, you have a product. And if it's irreducible, then you have an irreducible representation. All right. Okay, so this is, this is reducibility. And as I said, we're going to just break down, break the Riemannian manifolds into, into their factors, right? Into products. And we're gonna look at the products one by one. And the next thing, as I said, I want to exclude is being symmetric. So being symmetric means that basically you have an action of a big group on your manifold. So, and here's the rigorous definition. So a Riemannian manifold is called symmetric. if for every point of the manifold, there exists an isometry. By an isometry, I mean something that will preserve the metric. So an isometry SP from M to M, such that the square of your isometry is the identity. So basically it's an involution, right? And P is an isolated fixed point. Of SCP. All right, so it's allowed to have other fixed points but you don't want any fixed points in some neighborhood of your point. And now this allows us to define 
what locally symmetric is. So a Riemannian manifold is called locally symmetric. if every point has an open neighborhood. Isometric to an open subset. Of a symmetric space. It is called non-symmetric if it is not locally symmetric. Okay, and then let me just give you the, the theorem here and I will stop. Mg is locally symmetric if and only if Nabla R is zero. So Nabla is again the Levi Civita connection here, and R is the curvature of the Levi Civita connection. So you're saying that your, your Riemannian manifold is locally symmetric if and only if the curvature of the Levi Civita connection is constant for the levi civita connection, okay? All right, so this, this is a nice characterization of uh, locally symmetric Riemannian manifolds, all right? And so what I will do next time, um, then I will talk about the Durham decomposition theorem and the Berger decomposition, uh, no, not the Berger, the Berger classification of polynomial groups, and then um, how we get hyperkeller manifolds out of that. And, uh, I think I am out of time, is that right? Oh, you, you are perfect. You are perfect, you are perfect. Yes. 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 Thank you. Okay, well, thank you. All right, any questions, anyone? I have one. Um, yes, uh -huh. go ahead, please. So what are, what are uh, the examples of symmetric Riemannian manifolds besides the, the spheres and so on? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I was I was going to uh, say that next time. Uh, well, you can show that um, uh, symmetric guys are basically just quotients of Lie groups. Yeah, that that's all of them. So you can. So each time, so you just uh, each time you have a connected Lie group, you take a closed connected Lie subgroup, you take the quotient. That's a symmetric. That's a that's a symmetric space, and they're they're all obtained in that way. Yeah, that's all of them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So there's a there's a theorem about that. I will mention it next time. Thank you. Thank you. So I think now you have another break, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 